Hi Graham, it's me again, Gustavo Alcardi and on this second video uh, I'd like to show you some more uh, features on my model so um, I think you can start by this area here and uh, I just saw the, the um, example you sent me here when you're a student uh, let me okay here so actually it's um, a beautiful model indeed and then we have here fillets that run across the the surface from up to down okay good and uh, here we have the map pocket and um, I can see here is a beautiful transition this is a G3 actually even okay cool now uh, I want to explain a bit uh, of my patch layout here first uh, let's start by uh, analyzing the um, mesh here so uh, the reason I used uh, this surface here with a sharp corner here and another surface here actually two other surface it's because here you can see um, by the curvature analysis we have uh, almost no, no transition here it's kind of like a, a one surface here so uh, in my mind the the clay modeling tent here was to make uh, a very smooth transition here while here I want to make something more uh, noticeable something more sharp okay so if we take a look on my surface now that's what I did so here it's a very smooth transition I got by aligning this surface to this one and here it's a tangent break so this tangent break is intentional it, um, it's kind of like a washes out nearby the surface so uh, later on I run feel it just across here so I get the same effect we saw on the on the mesh so let's take another look on the mesh so here you can see here is a smooth transition here is a sharp one that's the same effect I try to reproduce so uh, if you look at the example you sent me okay I personally I think this is um, more beautiful than the, the original mesh but uh, I try to get in the same highlight so that's why I use a dispatch layout and not a, another okay let's get back okay ah okay so here was a very tricky area for me uh, the transition nearby the speaker so you can see here we get uh, one two three surface and this surface here what's the main was the main one I made it's uh, actually aligned by project with this parent surface here and this surface not the same as this one um, I didn't manage to mod this and this as one surface it's um, they are actually not uh, the uh, G2 continuity they are not the same surface I found this easy to model here one surface and then here another I got the, I got the surface more close to the mesh uh, actually there's a little kink here I need to solve it later but uh, the transition with the surface is good I think here we have another surface here it's a uh, tangent to this one we can check not sure oh, I toggle my locators off sorry ah no 
for some reason it's um, not to think positional continuity but this is weird okay it's aligning with another surface my fault let me hide this for a while so here we may have a G1 good perhaps G2 no that's too much and now this is the surface I think it was, was the most tricky one actually you can see here is not good uh, what I did actually was to take this freeform blend that I built first just to check actually is um, a base surface for me to create the, the final fillet later on because uh, I'm going to extract the curves out of these blends it's not grouped so it takes a while let me select it Okay, now this is uh, the free farm blend that I created. This is a by rail surface I created, keeping the continuity with the upper free farm blend. And what I tr tried to do next was to align on these both sides the surface. So the, um, if we, we do not look down you look just here you can see they actually made it job but um, I think there might be some other way to do it uh, a better way it's actually hard to tell the patch layout here because the, the you can see the curvature on this area is just weird I mean you have um, it's kind of a blend it says blue I mean it's not po not positive with negative surface and here we have even more negative surface it needs to curve down perhaps it, this is another surface here just like this one anyway uh, that's how I that's the solution I found so far uh, let me show you here we don't need this surface okay so here before was one surface uh, I used the uh, Springer edge here to align it with another helper surface here you can see this helper surface um, is in the speaker it's perpendicular to the speaker wall later on I cut and change it to um, a fillet you can see actually still needs to work here here um, I actually made this transition already this is a helper surface you can see here from top to bottom and uh, I use a f first um, uh, no I didn't use a freeform blend that just creates surface and then al align it uh, with uh, G1 to the helper surface and G2 with this parent surface here I actually want to show you something else if you pick the curves I use as an input well, a lot of curves <laughs> here that's the curve that's how I like the curves I, I told you uh, I think they work better multi-span so I do not waste in time to create a lot of um, um, degree three curves and then create blade curves and set up the, trans set up the transitions and so on. I just create a high degree multi-span curve which actually gives a very good result I think you can see by the judging the the comb in many different angles very smooth transition I just have to care a little bit about the CV distribution they are okay they are overworked but message um, as I was saying 
the CV is a little bit overworked, but uh, I don't care. In reality, because they would just serve this curve will just serve as a bed for the um, helper surface, and helper surface it itself later on will be deleted. So there is no problem, I think, uh, using what do you think? Using multi span curves. Okay. Here is another example of um, good sweeping curve. I used it to create the transitional surface between the armrests and the middle surface. And uh, one thing I like to show you is that if I okay, here is okay. When I built this curve, I made it tangent to a perpendicular line to this edge, which is actually the intersection between the armrest surface and this parent surface. So I think it's um, good to sweeping curve. I just like the, the way it becomes decrease the acceleration towards the end uh, you can see here and I used the same uh, concept for the map pocket here Let's pick the surface, okay. Here you can see. Uh, this is actually, I made out the whole theoretical intersection line out of one curve. I think this curve uh, is to the proper layer, okay, here is. Now let, let's just take a look on the curve I used here. So it's a good uh, sweeping curve, I think. This gave me a lot of help when doing these transitions. I mean, I almost did no direct model. It's a very natural transition from this surface to this one, from this one to this one, and so on. You can see here. So if I just use dynamic section two, here is oh here you can see. Good transition. Not that uh, I believe it's really important to have um, um, very smooth transitions in a hidden area like the map pocket, but it was just an exercise uh, for me to do it. And I really uh, liked the result. So, uh, another difference I noticed from the model you sent me to mine is that here the surface is uh, does not uh, goes inward, inboard I mean, it's actually, uh, mine has a little space here and I did it because it seems the mesh is asking to do so here, you can see it indicates me that uh, Okay, you need to go in board a little bit. So that's what I did. Okay, th uh, that's pretty much for this video. I think it's long enough. In the next video I speak a little about these transitions here because they are the most difficult part on the model for me. And thank you for watching my video. Thank you for your patience and bye-bye. Uh,